For anyone that appreciates the music of the Final Fantasy series, Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line is a pure dream. Covering 385 songs from across the Final Fantasy series and side games, it is the de facto experience to shower your ears with some of the best music in video games. Are 385 songs not enough for you? Well, it also offers songs across series like Chrono Trigger, The World Ends With You, The Saga series, and Nier, just to name a few, through DLC packs or season passes. For those new to the Theater Rhythm series, this is actually the fifth game with only the first two, Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy and Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call, seeing a release outside of Japan. The third in this series was based on the popular Dragon Quest series, which still saddens me to this day it never actually got an English release, and the fourth being an arcade game for Japan, which to my understanding is a lot of what Final Bar Line is based off of. But what is a Theater Rhythm game? At its core, it's a rhythm game, thus the name, but it also incorporates a lot of RPG mechanics. In Final Bar Line, you create a party out of the eventual 104 playable characters you collect by playing through the story mode. As you play through the game, your party members gain experience and level up, which improves their stats and unlocks skills that you can then equip to them. Characters are assigned classes like attacker, tank, healer, mage, summoner, etc., to help you understand how you are building out your party and the roles they will play in it. The different stages have quests attached to them that you can complete for extra rewards, and you also have items you can take into a stage to help you out if you're having problems completing it. Your party can also equip a summon stone that provides additional stats and bonuses, plus does additional damage when activated during a stage. There are also collector cards you obtain through playing stages, quests, and your overall game level that provide additional bonuses to your party. Final Bar Line is made up of three game modes, Series Quest, Music Stages, and Multi-Battle. In Series Quest, you play through 29 of the Final Fantasy games. Each series is locked initially, with only one key to start you off. You can pick from six of the series to ease you in with some tutorials, but after this, you are able to pick from whichever series you want as you obtain more keys. As you play through a series, you will eventually come across a chest which has one additional key to then unlock another series. Playing through a series is pretty straightforward. It's just a series of nodes from beginning to end, no branching paths or anything. You might have a grouping of two or three stages show up, but you only need to complete one of them to continue on. If you complete a series, you are usually rewarded with a new playable character, and if you complete all the quests in for each node in that series path, you will get rewarded with more items and collector cards. There is a point where one of the series with no key ability to unlock it does open, but honestly I'm not sure what I did to trigger it. But once you do go through this series, you get the game's credits and an endless world mode opens up. In this new mode, you have three lives, and you get to choose from songs it presents you with, each with their own quest attached. You have to complete the quest on the song you choose, or you will lose a heart, lose all three hearts, and you're done. There are two stage types when playing through series quest mode, field music sequence and battle music sequence. In the field scenes, your party travels across a landscape fighting monsters along the way, while in battle scenes, your party is stationary fighting waves of enemies. The main difference between the two modes being that in the field scenes, there are note lines that you have to use the analog stick to follow along as it goes between the different lines. One other difference, which is purely visual, is that you can select an airship from different ones in the series as you unlock them that will drop you off at the beginning of the stage. When playing through stages, if your party's HP goes to zero from missing notes or having bad timing, then you will fail the stage. You also do damage to the enemies by properly timing the inputs and also get critical hits by hitting the inputs perfectly. In music stages, you can play through the music you have unlocked through the series quest and also any of the DLC music you might have picked up for the game. It also has a third mode of game style here called Event Music Stages. These are basically uh, full motion videos that have the lines coming from top to bottom of the screen and play pretty much like the field music sequences. 
There are also songs in this mode you'll find that are flagged for daily challenges, which give more experience if you beat them and randomly change on every day. Nothing changes with the party mechanics in this mode, and you still gain experience and level up here as well. In multi-battle, you connect online to play against other players for the best score. The player hosting the lobby gets to pick the difficulty of the songs, then the players all pick a song of their choice, and it will randomly select one to battle against. There is no fail condition when you're playing this mode, but obviously if you're missing so many notes that you would lose all your HP, you're probably going to end up losing this battle as well. The room owner can also opt in for additional effects that players can trigger on each other, like making the inputs needed to hit smaller or adding fake inputs on the lines. When playing online, you need to create a profile card, which will show your stats when traded to other players. You also get the ability to attach a summon stone that when you trade your card with others, they will get that summon stone. When the game first released, this was a great way to collect a ton of powerful summons, but unfortunately it seems the online community is pretty sparse at this point. As I went on over the course of several nights to try and get an online group for footage and just could not find anyone playing, I did actually stumble upon a few online lobbies during my morning hours, but this doesn't really speak volumes for the online community at the moment. Before I forget, I also want to point out that outside the standard mode when playing stages, you also have the option to play in pair mode, which has two players playing a stage together, and there is a simple mode which allows you to play with only one button. There is also a museum section where you can see your collect cards you have obtained, a theater mode to watch any of the FMV sequence you have unlocked without actually playing them, a music player to listen to all the music you've unlocked, records of your playtimes, battles, and such, and also a feat section which is basically an in-game's achievement system. If I had to give any faults for Final Bar Line, it would be with the character Monster Art Style. I'm just not really a fan of it. I have gotten used to it through playing the different games in the series, but at the end of the day, it serves its purposes and it really is just a personal taste thing. The online battle is currently being practically non-existent for people who decide to pick up the game now is also a bummer. Other than that, to me, Final Bar Line is a must-own game. I am not even that great at it, but that does not stop me from having hours of enjoyment with it. It is a game that plays off of what is arguably some of the best music in video games, it is always rewarding you for your progress, and it is an easy game to just throw up and play for short or long bursts with no story attached. Final Bar Line is a game with pretty much endless replayability and fun, and for that I give Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line a perfect 10 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to switch over by clicking like and subscribing, and until next time, thanks for watching.